Okay, welcome back everyone. This is Mr. Anderson and we're taking a break from the Matrix and in this case, Books 101. So right off the bat, the New Age Magazine. For those of you guys that don't know, this is way over 100 years ago. They started the New Age Magazine. It's like a pamphlet size magazine for Freemasons to converse and talk to each other, right? So this is the November 1969 version, the special buzzed Aldrin edition, right? And basically you have to be a 32 degree or 33 degree to put articles in this to be published, right? So this is the top dogs talking, okay? Now this was obviously a, a special one for them. There's many of these. This one's pro probably really hard to get your hands on now. I bought this like eight years ago or so. Right? So, like it says right there, Edwin, Edwin Aldrin Jr., 32 degrees on the moon. You can see that. Right? And, of course, they got this ridiculous painting of a globe on the back. <laughs> and interesting enough, uh, Postmaster Send Form 3579 to the Supreme Council, 33 degree, 1733 16th Street, Washington, D.C., so for those of you goofballs who, who try to talk crap about people when we're explaining, hey, they intentionally picked 33, or they did it right at 133, or they, they purposely picked their address with a 33 in it. There it is right there, okay? So get out of my face with all that. Now, we're, not, we're obviously not going to read through all this. They got a special little Thanksgiving thing, table of contents, right? We're not going to read all this. I'm not going to bore you to death with all this because half of it's just totally stupid. They like to word things because a lot of the people who joined Freemasonry and a lot of the people in this society years ago were Christians and believed in creator, right? So they have to word things in that way, okay? So here we've got the Grand Commander's message. And as you can see, Got this the sigil of Baphomet. Okay. Now, Sovereign Grand Commander. Again, we're not going to go through all of it. Okay, Freemasonry in the Space Age. Masonry is dedicated to the search for truth and recognizes the great architect of the universe, deism, of course, as the author of all truth, both the realm of the spirit and the mysteries of science, architecture, and geometry. Then we got this editorial by De Molay, the trainer of the craftsmen of the Republic. We're not going to go through all this. J. Edgar Hoover, let's see. Disdain for the order. Special thanks from Harry Applequist, 33 degree from Sacramento. The Scottish right in the world of today. Charles Ranley, 33 degree, Sovereign Grand Commander, Supreme Council, 33 degree for France. Paris, France. Okay, again, I'm not going to, I'm going to get straight to the good part, straight to the space part, okay? The word, new, the new age is pretty obvious. They want a new world order, and the old order has to be destroyed, and the phoenix symbology being reborn, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For those of you that have researched how power works and how the occult works, you already know all that. I'm not going to get into all that. Faith, hope, and charity. William Tollerson, 32 degree. All right, so here we go. Freemasonry in the space. Here, let me put it on the screen. And if you want to pause it and read the whole thing, I'm not going to read this whole thing. But as you can see, right there is Kenneth Kleinsneck. I don't know how to say his name. Kleinneck. <laughs> Kenneth Kleinneck, 33 degree, manager for the command and service module for the Apollo space program. So that's the head honcho right there of that whole thing whole thing. So I've known for years that Freemasonry was, or sorry, the space was a Freemasonic thing. Um, many people don't realize that for some insane reason, but it's undeniable. And I'm going to show that right here. Just what is the role of Freemasonry in this space age? Is it an earthbound philosophy? Rapidly become an an antiquated and useless in the modern era, we will have to forget its mysteries and ideals. 
Will we be forced to abandon faith in its principles as science pushes us further and further from the solid earth into the vague outreaches of space? They get very poetic in here. Let's see. Alan Shepard's spacecraft was named Freedom. So here they start naming how, oh, we believe in a creator. Look how we name things Freedom and Liberty Bell and Friendship, blah, blah, blah. But what do they really name the actual programs? Apollo, Gemini. That shows you where their real allegiance is, right? So I'm not going to read through all this wizardry here. Certainly all this is a sign. Lifeblood of the Brotherhood. Okay. I see my scientists. Let's see. Okay. Biographical sketches follow Brother Mason's. Now here it is. The team. The space team. The Apollo team. Freemasonic team. Okay. After this, I don't want to hear all that nonsense about when you when you try to and this is not ad hominem, right? This is just research, y'all. This is a books 101 episode, okay? This is how research is. It's uh in their words. I can say that in their words, November 1969, in their New Age magazine, this is what they said. Okay. Doesn't mean everything they say is correct and ordained and holy and whatever you want to call it, right? So here it is. We're going to go through the team. I'm not going to read all the profiles of these guys. I'm, a couple select people like Kleinneck and Buzz Aldrin, I will. But I'll briefly hit on each one of these. So here, here he is, Edwin, Edwin, Mr. Buzz Aldrin himself, right? There he goes. Colonel Edwin E. Aldrin Jr., U.S. Air Force, was, <clears throat> excuse me, was born in Montclair, New Jersey, on January 20th, 1930. He graduated from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, New York, in 1951 with a Bachelor of Science degree and received a Doctor of Science degree in Astronautics and from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology at Cambridge, Massachusetts, in 1963. All right. Colonel Aldrin was one of the third groups of astronauts named by NASA in October 63. He since served as a backup pilot for the Gemini 9 mission and a prime pilot for the Gemini 12 mission. On November 11, 1966, him and command pilot James Lovell, Lovell were launched into space in the Gemini 12 spacecraft on a four-day 59 revolutionary flight, re 59 revolution flight, which brought the Gemini program to a successful close. Aldrin established a new record for extravehicular activity, EVA, by accruing slightly more than five and a half hours outside the spacecraft. During the umbilical EVA, he attached a tether to the agina, agina retrieved a micrometeorite experiment package from the spacecraft, and evaluated the use of body restraints specifically designed for completing work tasks outside the spacecraft he completed the numerous photographic experiments and obtained first pictures taken from space of the ellipse eclipse of the sun nonsense obviously other major accomplishments of the 94 hour 35 minute flight included a third revolution rendezvous rendezvous with the previously launched agena however you say it using for the first time backup onboard computations due to radar failure and a fully automatic controlled re-entry of a spacecraft. Gemini 12 splashed down in the Atlantic within two and a half miles of the prime recovery ship USS Wasp. Aldrin was the backup command module pilot for the Apollo 8 flight. He served as lunar module pilot of Apollo 11. July 16 to 24, 1969, the first manned lunar landing mission. He was the second astronaut to land and walk on the moon. He must have been the third, because the cameraman must have been first, right? Colonel Aldrin is married to the former Joan Ann Archer. The Aldrins have three children, James M., Janice R., and Andrew J. Okay, and here it is. Brother Aldrin is a member of the Clear Lake Lodge number 1417 AF and AM at Seabrook, Texas, and a member of the Houston, Texas Scottish Rite Bodies. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah. All right. 
So there it is. I, I named the lodge he came from. Don't tell me he's not a Mason. Okay. Leroy Gordon Cooper Jr., the colonel in the U.S. Air Force, born March 16, or sorry, 6, 1927, blah, 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 degree in aeronautical. I'm going to skip all this. Pilot of the Fate 7. This, this is a big, long one here. Summer of Decision. Skip through it. Cooper and five fellow astronauts were given special honorary, et cetera, et cetera. In a later flight, okay. In a later flight, the famous Gemini 5 flight from August 21st to 19, or sorry, to 29, 1965, Brother Cooper set the world record at that time for cumulative space flight. Furthermore, he made this flight of Masonic significance by carrying with him the official 33 degree jewel and handmade Scottish Rite flag. Especially made for the flight, the flag was woven of white silk and measured 22 by 33 centimeters. Okay? So get out of my face with all that. Um, trying to talk crap about people who are understanding how power works and what the hell is really going on in this world. Get out of my face with that. They intentionally made the flag 33 centimeters long. So get out of my face. Okay, moving on. It is edged by a band of gold and embroidered with the inscription, the Supreme Council, with a double-headed eagle and the crown of the 33 degree. Okay. A rayed equilateral triangle with swords pointing to the center decorates the lower portion of the flag. In the special ceremony on September 22nd, 1965, Brother Kenneth Kleineck, 33 degree, who was deputy manager of the Gemini program, presented the jewel and the flag to the sovereign grand commander, illustrious brother, Luther, Luther A. Smith, 33 degree, at the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C., where the articles were put on exhibition in the Library of the Supreme Council. Now, that's 13 blocks from the White House, which has Albert Pike's body. It's his mausoleum, right? 13 blocks from the White House. That's not an accident, obviously. Okay. 13, representing rebirth and regeneration, 12 houses of the Zodiac, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Don F. Eisel, Lieutenant Colonel, born in Columbus, served as backup command module of the Apollo 10. Brother Isle is a member of the Luther B. Turner Lodge, number 732 F&A-M at Columbus, Ohio. Okay. This is the crew, you guys. This is the team. All right. Even if you really think that we went to the moon, which I can't believe any adult would believe that. Even if you believe those lies, it was still a whole, an entire Freemasonic mission. Okay. In any case, people say, "Oh, how could everybody be on the same page and say the same lie?" And both they are all on the same team. Don't you get it? <laughs> That's why I'm doing this episode. I'm glad I bought this like eight years ago because once the 50th anniversary of NASA hit, this kind of stuff is very hard to get a hold of, okay? Virgil Grissom, Lieutenant Colonel of the Air Force, okay? March 23, 1965, served as commander pilot on the Gemini flight, blah, blah, blah. He had been named to serve as command pilot for the first three-man Apollo flight, Apollo 1. Brother Grissom was married to Betty Moore. Now, this is the guy, Grissom, his name's Grissom. Distinguished career came to an end on a tragic evening, January 27th, 1967, while conducting a launch pad test at Cape Kennedy, Florida, in preparation for the now successful Apollo moonshot, a flash fire instantly killed Grissom and two other fellow astronauts, Lieutenant Colonel Edward H. White and Lieutenant Commander Roger B. Chaffee. The whole nation shared in President Johnson's grief and said, these valiant young men have given their lives in the nation's service. We mourn the great lots and our hearts go out to our, their families. Masons in particular, he felt this loss. He was a member of the Mitchell Lodge number 228 F and A M at Mitchell, Indiana, having been made a master Mason there, May 19th, 1949. Okay. Now this is the big dog himself right here. The big dog himself. 33 degree, Kenneth S. Kleineck. Certainly illustrious brother, C.F. Kleineck, Sr., 
33 degree, Assistant Grand Secretary General of the Supreme Council has reason to be proud of his eldest son, Kenneth S. Kleinek, who played a major role in getting the first man to the moon. Brother Kenneth is NASA's manager for the command and service modules of the Apollo spacecraft program. In February 1968, he accurately predicted. It's easy to predict stuff when you guys are the one doing the shit. <laughs> he accurately... Forging it and faking it, of course. If you know you're going to fake something in 1969, you say, hey, something like they did with H.G. Wells, right? H. People like H.G. Wells were actually published in New Age magazine, right? And who was it? Edward? I'm trying to remember now some of the other people who were published in this. I'm sticking to this, though, this, this 1969. Buzz Daldrin. He accurately predicted a lunar landing in 1969, saying... We cannot tolerate complacency in Kapalo. From here, we must go forward or backward, and we must certainly not go backward. All right? He presented the Grand Commander Luther A. Smith, 33 degree, a Scottish right flag, and a 33 degree jewel that Colonel L. Gordon Cooper, a brother Mason, had carried during his space flight in 65. The flag and jewel, the first Scottish right emblems to have been in outer space. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so dumb. I'm sorry, y'all. Were put on display in the library of the Supreme Council. <clears throat> Making me cough. Oh man, this is so funny. During special ceremonies at the White House, May 21st, 1963, Blutter Kleinick was awarded the, N NSA, the NASA Medal by President Kennedy for his work in developing spacecraft for the extended Project Mercury miss mission. All these honors were the result of long years dedicated to America's space program. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read all this nonsense. Come on, y'all. Air Force Base, California. Blah, blah, blah. He was appointed his position as deputy manager, Gemini, Gemini program. Blah, blah, blah. Mercury. February 20, 1967, he was appointed manager of the command and service module, Apollo spacecraft program, and is responsible for the overall planning technical direction, and coordination of all aspects of the command and service modules through the management of industrial contractors and the guidance and coordination of other elements of Manned Spacecraft Center and National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the Department of Defense, and other government agencies who were assigned parts of this project. This is the ringleader, you guys. Okay? This is the ringleader of this stupid nonsense. Okay? Of these. <laughs> of this stupid Apollo mission. All right. These many very, they're taking millions from us every day. And, and they're giving us nonsense like this, dude. Some weak ass CGI. And in this case, it wasn't even CGI. It was just nonsense. People dancing on strings and shit. Give me a break. These many varied and valuable positions have not prevented Brother Kleinick from an active Masonic life as a member of the Fairview Lodge, number 699, FNAM, Fairview, Ohio, and the Pasadena Scottish Rite Bodies in Pasadena, he was coronated, netted in the Inspector General Honorary of the 33 degree in 1963. He's married to blah, 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 an efficient executive with the technical know-how on the ground as he assures the safety and success of his brother astronauts in space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, man, dude. Together, they make a team that will carry masonry into the space age. You see? This bullshit was all Freemasonic, man. Give me a break. Edgar Mitchell. Here we go. Brother Mitchell, member of the Artesia Lodge, number 28A, F and M, N. Sorry, M, at Artesia, New Mexico. Walter Shera Jr. Right? Occupied this aircraft, spacecraft, blah, 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 blah. Brother Shera became master of the Royal Secret in Orlando, Florida, 1968, June 15th. The degree was exemplified by a group of excellent ritualists of the Orlando Scottish Rite bodies and attended such notable masons as the illustrious brother William M. Hollis, 33 degree, sovereign grand inspector general in Florida, presently, Brother Shira is a member of the Canaveral Lodge number 339 F and AM at Cocoa Beach, Florida, and a member of the Orlando Scottish Rite Bodies. Thomas P. Stafford, right? Selected as one of the astronauts for blah blah blah. This stuff's so stupid, man. 
I'm just showing you guys. Doing the research isn't stupid, okay? But this is fucking dumb, you guys. Talking about their brother Masons in space. This is some really pathetic weasels that are taking credit. <laughs> oh, man. Astronaut Stafford is a member of the Western Star Lodge, number 138, A, F, and M, A, M at Weatherford, Oklahoma. Paul White's. This mission, that mission, nonsense. James Edwin Webb, okay? Also a distinguished brother, devoted much of his time to the public service. Municipal Manpower Committee, Board Chairman, Meridian House Foundation, Advisory Council, School of the Industrial Committee, Graduate School of Public Administration, Harvard University, Federal City Council, Washington, D.C., Trustee, George Washington University, Washington, D.C., Advisory Committee, 1960-61, Presidential Transition Project, Brookings Institution, Washington, D.C., he was appointed Administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, a position from which he retired in 68. Brother Webb had been awarded the following honorary degrees, LLD, University of North Carolina, 1949, Syracuse University, 1950, Colorado College, 1957, George Washington University, June 1961, SCD, um, Notre Dame University, June 1961, Washington University, St. Louis, February 1962, the University of Kansas City, December 1962. He also received honorary degrees from the Northeastern University in Boston, Oklahoma City University, and University of Pittsburgh. Brother Webb was raised in University Lodge, number 408, AF&AM, in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, on December 19, 1927, and on this June 27, 1929, he affiliated with Oxford Lodge, number 122, AF&AM, at Oxford, North Carolina. That's another major dude. Now here they've got a, a logo of the pyramid with no headstone with the pillars of Jacques and Boaz on each side, right? The past is a river flowing from an unknown source. Blah, blah, blah. Some stupid nonsense to get their juices flowing, right? Now here, look at the words, y'all. I'm going to try to wrap this up soon because I don't want this video to be forever. Because I skipped most of this book. I'm not going through this book. In the beginning, you see the, the words and the symbology and the allegory, right? Because in the beginning, we stepped out into God's realm, essentially, by eating from the fruit, okay? William Blaine, 33 degree, St. Paul, Minnesota. July 20, 1969 is a day that will go down in history. For on that date, for the first time since the creation of the earth, man stepped out of his natural environment and set foot on a new creation the moon a new creation these guys this is so insane on so many levels dude but it's essentially it's like <clears throat> excuse me again it's like it's allegory right it's fundamental out like if you've seen ironically it was actually the same person who filmed these fake moon landings but if you've seen 2001 a space odyssey by stanley kubrick right and the beginning of that movie is like 20 minutes with no no words being spoken and that is the most public version of the mystery school teachings i've ever seen still to this day right and it's mo monkeys and then they touch that monolith and they get intellect and become the beginning of what could be gods right and they, they can think now, and they can do tools. And, and then when the monkeys see those other monkeys at the water hole, he bashes them over the head and kills them. Down goes Abel. They don't say it like that, but if you watch that, it's, it's the story of creation from the perspective of an occultist mystery school Luciferian, essentially. Because there's two fundamental concepts, right? Luciferians call that time the golden age. People like Christians and Bible believers, for example, see it as what they call the fall of man. And that's what the allegory represents in the story. In the Luciferian world, the God was a vindictive and horrible, cruel God. And it was the blessed Lucifer who came and taught us how to get knowledge, right? Just like the Prometheus. Um, God got mad at Prometheus for bringing fire Fire representing intellect to the human beings, right? It's the same thing. You can call them Prometheans, whatever you want to call them.
But I'm not going to read through this, but here you can see. There's the Freemason team, you guys. The Apollo mission, that fake nonsense, okay? Now here is the American flag on the moon, so-called, and President Nixon welcoming the astronauts. This is a totally Freemasonic thing, you guys. The U.S. delegation. Okay, so this is for those weirdos and fools. When we're talking in the context of science and scientism, right? And we talk about um, Freemasonry having a hand in that. Here it is right here. Masonry, the catalyst for science. Let me hold it up so maybe, I don't know if you can read it or if it's focused enough. Because again, I'm not going to do a, a, a three-hour video reading this whole thing. Right? Because nobody's going to click on this video. It's already long enough as it is. We're already 20-something minutes in. But Dr. Raymond W. Miller, 33 degree, DuPont Circle, Washington, D.C. Nobel Prize winner, blah, blah, blah. Of course, they're all connected. They give each other pats on the back. Some of the most ridiculous crap. These people, it reminds me of the UN, Dr. Robert Mueller, when he had got the UNESCO Peace Prize. And UNESCO is one of his underneath things that he's running. So he basically gave himself a prize. These people, oh man. If you watch my uh, school presentation, I go in on uh, Mr. Robert Mueller. Not the Mueller from the fake goose chase to cover up, you know what, gate. Collusion with the actual country and not so-called Russia. Later in the Middle Ages, coils, so we got some quotes. The Mackey's Encyclopedia, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Of current interest, legislators honor Grand Commander. So this is Grand Commander Luther Smith and Grand Secretary General Fred Kleinick at a luncheon June, July 24, 1969, of the 33 degree Masons in the United States Congress. Hmm. You freaking conspiracy theorist. There isn't a bunch of Masons in a bunch of places. Dude, that one dude, how many places of uh, prominence was he in? That one guy. I rattled off like 20 different things that he was running. Not running, but places of influence, you guys. This is how power works. This is how it's always been. Ring found. General Le receives medals. Lee Lockwood, 33 degree. Chancellor honored. Inspector Lee Lockwood, Council of the Knights of the Red Cross of Constantine. Dude, there's so many secret societies. There's thousands of them, all right? There's thousands of weirdos thinking they're special boys patting each other on the back on how they're so knowledgeable. And we're all this, they call us the profane, by the way. In a lot of cases, we unfortunately prove them right on that, which is sad to say. Like Cooper said, those who don't, use their intelligence to pursue truth or essentially stakes on the table by consent, right? That's a paraphrase, obviously. Here goes these awards being given and awarding the president um, of the Shriners, right? Whole another level of, of wizardry going on with that. Trying to tie it into the Hashishans and all that. So here we go with Klein, a portrait of Kleinet being presented. This big, major, holy man in their world, right? And all these Masons uh, rep, uh, doing a presentation and honoring this dude, okay? Supreme Council of Order de Molay, because of de Molay, of course, that's where the Friday the 13th thing comes from because they killed their leader. Their leader was killed on Friday the 13th. They rounded him up, the leader of the Templars. That's why to this day, you got a Templar degree right it's all the same difference you guys secret society is a secret society right presentation of the 33 degree jewel to general nickerson in vietnam so you got 33 degrees people giving a 33 degree honor to this dude running things in vietnam masonic power fred lankin see i'm not going to read all this this video is already getting too long I'm going to mess around. The video is going to end up being 33 minutes. Watch. Here goes some book reviews they do and blah, 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 blah. Visitors welcome. Scottish Rite dates. LA, they met on the first Friday. Right? Journey, NATO, 
and on in Germany and NATO areas. San Francisco, they met on Fridays. Let's see, Santa Rosa, they met on Tuesdays. It's huh. interesting. So then you got a memoriam and you got all this different, uh, this tablet showing all these different officers, even um, Henry Clausen, et cetera. And there's that stupid globe, right? That lame globe. So this was a relatively long episode for a book episode, which I guess, technically speaking, a book episode would be longer. But I'm just showing you, if you can get your hands on these, there's some different ones that aren't as significant as this. I've, I've got one or two other ones that I might do one on, but that's about it. I wanted to wrap it up because this is basically showing you straight up that space is a Freemasonic enterprise, whether you believe that space is real or not, right? I happen to know through research, in my own opinion, that they just lie. These people are liars, you guys. They're taking millions of dollars and they give us nothing but nonsense. I mean, a couple months ago, there's a rat running around their so-called shuttle. A rat. They got ratted out. Okay, that's it, you guys. Thank you. I'm going to click this off before, it, before I fuck around and go to uh, 33 minutes. <laughs>